The Portage Animal Protective League is a nonprofit organization. We do not receive any government funding for operating expenses for the shelter. This is a 5,500 square foot facility that we have. It was built entirely through donations. Our mission is to shelter and find safe homes for sick, injured, abused, and abandoned animals in need of help while upholding and enforcing all animal cruelty laws. We also educate the community on the social responsibility associated with pet ownership and help reduce pet overpopulation through spay and neuter programs. But the, the biggest function that we perform for the, really the people of the county is the Humane Officer Service. When I get a call at the facility or somebody will take a report, um, let's say you were driving down the road and you noticed an animal that looked really skinny, um, which is obviously unhealthy. You call here, you report it, give the address, name, the uh, telephone number if you have it, and then I go out and I investigate it. If, I, if it looks to be a legitimate call, I um, basically I just knock on the door and talk to the people. You know, and, and some are receptive and, and some aren't. If I am driving around, typically you would call it patrolling, but if I see something that I feel doesn't look right or it looks like there may be a situation that needs further investigation, I can stop at any time. The Humane Officer is here standard hours during the week. We also have rescue staff that go out and respond to pagers from the Sheriff's Department for animals that are injured. We've had support from Happy Trails Farm Animal Sanctuary. They allow us to help the farm animals more than our capacity here at the shelter allows. The shelter can hold a, a capacity of 140 cats and 50 dogs maximum. We do not have the capacity to do surgeries here, therefore we do have a van, it's called Nomad, that comes once or twice a month and performs low-cost spay and neuter surgeries. It's important that people spay and neuter their pets due to the massive overpopulation of cats out there. It's sad, the euthanasia rate is terrible, terrible, terrible. And the kittens that are born outside, a lot of them starve or they die of disease. The females, if they're not spayed, they can get mammary cancer just like a human. They can also get uh, infected uteruses or what's called um, pyometra, and that's a pus-filled uterus and that can kill them too. She only does cats and she does it for a really low price. It's 35 for males and 45 for females. It saves a lot of people a lot of money. Supplies here, we go through the latex gloves, bleach, and paper towels. Those are the things we go through weekly, we go through daily. We can use probably 15 gallons of bleach a week. Uh, everything is bleached because of disease transmission. Bleach will kill pretty much everything. Cat litter, they change it every day, sometimes twice a day. Dog food, they get fed twice a day. Uh, cats, normally they fill it up and leave it in there. Really, it just depends on how many animals we have in here at one time. Um, obviously, the more animals, the more food we're gonna be using. Each animal that's brought in, it costs roughly $720 a year to keep that animal, house it, have it spayed, neutered, keep it up to date on its vaccines, and feed it and provide the staff to care for it each day. And we do not receive any government funding for operating expenses for the shelter. People often don't support an animal shelter. We find from businesses, a lot of times they'll tell us we support people, we don't support animals but by supporting animals you are supporting people because they're the companions that your employees go home and enjoy for the rest of the evening. They're always there to you know, bring unconditional love for your employees. And the therapy that we do with them, and you can see how people really respond to animals. It is a bond between the two. You can't separate we give the animals or we give the people. It's, it's very difficult because they both go back to the same and it's helping people. Each year our budget should be about $750,000 to run the shelter. Roughly 17% of that amount comes from adoption fees. So when you come in and you pay a $100 adoption fee for a dog, that only covers 17% of our budget. The rest has to come from people, from donations. And we've been struggling with the economy tightening. Donations, of course, are tightening also. And it doesn't necessarily work when kitten and puppy season come. 
because then we're beyond capacity. You can't hold a capacity count because the need is here in the county to keep us. I went to one of the nursing homes and the residents who live there are just thrilled because they'll leave with the animals and you won't see them <laughs> until it's time to go and you, the nurses have to hunt down the animals. But uh, we had one situation where a woman was, she was dying and her family was there and uh, we were going through the hall and they saw us come by and she says her mother loved cats and she just wanted to take this cat in and the cat sat with her mother and uh, they were just so grateful because they said, um, what they say, their mother was the queen of cats when she was a lot, you know, when she lived on her own and was able to take care of herself and she loved cats. And you could see her respond to that cat being there at that particular time. I got a beautiful calico from you that we have since named Cuddles. When I got home with her, she was happy to take over the house. The kids adore her, and she knows it. Cuddles loves to chase the Hot Wheel cars as the kids play with their car track. Thank you, APL, the M family. I brought Freckles home, and she's already brought so much happiness and love to my home. She's the perfect kitty for me. She's wonderful. Thanks, Sandy and Freckles. Dear friends at the Portage APL, you probably don't remember me, but I'm sure you remember Grandpa. He was with me for a short six-month period in 2005 and then succumbed to cancer at Christmas the same year. Although I had him for only a short time, he will occupy a place in my heart forever. He was truly a special friend. You provide a wonderful service. Thank you for being there for pets in need. In memory of Grandpa, Dennis. Dear APL, my daughter Allison asked for donations to your organization instead of gifts for her 10th birthday. We were very pleased by our outcome, $210. Thanks for all you do, Jenny and Allison. Dear APL, 11 years ago we adopted a German Shepherd Sheltie mix named Buddy. I remember coming home from school to a little puppy lying on a blanket in our living room. She was shaking, nervous of her new owners. Her past owners were going through a divorce and Buddy was caught in the middle, abused as a poor innocent dog. She was ran over by the previous owner and wore the scars of the tragedy. Today, she is a beautiful, healthy dog, fat, but healthy. She loves going on walks, sitting in our yard, listening to the neighborhood dogs bark, and loves Kraft American Cheese singles. Thanks for taking in Buddy and giving us the opportunity to adopt her. Sincerely, Evan. Dear APL, I felt so bad when I read the article about the horses. I love horses so much that I wanted to send in my allowance money, $5. I hope you get enough money for the bills. Sincerely, Allie.